So are you ready for parenting tip number 18? This one will change the way that your child views themselves and will prevent a lot of self-esteem issues when they grow up if they are taught the value of their own self-worth. I wanted to just read a little paragraph in my Mama's Gotta Let Go book. And this chapter is not in the Kindle version, so you'd have to get the Amazon um, paperback if you want this, but I will read it to you. Value yourself enough to prevent an emotional breakdown or meltdown. Every time you have a child, no matter how old they are, whether they're two or they're 22, when we have a meltdown, which all of us do, it does have to do with our self-worth and not believing that we are okay, right? And as parents, we have the power to teach our kids self-worth. I am going to offer um, simple exercises that really work on building self-esteem. But before I do that, I just want to just read this short paragraph. Do you value yourself or do you focus on what you feel you're doing wrong? I think we all do that, right? What am I doing wrong? And you just think of every negative trait that you have, which usually just rips your self-esteem. Our negative thinking patterns often lead to complaining about our lives, and I've been guilty of it. You just start complaining because you're focusing on what is not going on rather than the blessings that we have in our lives. It is a hard habit to break. When was the last time you shared your joy with friends instead of venting about your frustrations? When you get caught up in the drama of problems, and this is where we can teach our children to ask themselves, is it worth focusing on complaining to the point where you are emotionally, physically, and just mentally exhausted? We've all been there where we just grab onto that negative thought, believe that is true, and just totally allow it to rip us apart. Many of us play our emotional, um, you know, our emotional state is messed up because of the negative thoughts that are played in a mental loop. This is why renovating your brain or rewiring your brain, I do teach neuro-linguistic programming and use it with my students because so many of them are wired to believe that they're not good enough, that they will never be able to get the right grade, that they don't know how to study, that they're bad at math. I mean, you name it, right? We all believe in some negative trait about ourselves. So rewiring our neurons is um, gives us an opportunity to get rid of bad habits. Anything from quitting smoking to swearing to... Um, losing our temper. And you know, whatever doesn't serve you is the key to living, um, you know, like without stress and overwhelm. So you are in charge, and I teach my students this, we are in charge of how much space the negative thoughts um, will be in your brain. If you wanna entertain them, they'll be there, right? But don't engage in them. Will the thoughts be there? Yes, your brain is just trained to just think negative thoughts. So with that being said, um, the last example before I give you um, some self-esteem exercises is when your child refuses to cooperate and you see it as a sign that they are being hard-headed, you can flip switch it and think of it as what a great trait that they have in being decisive because they refuse to take out the trash, they refuse to do their homework, but you know what? They are practicing, when you think about it, being decisive, they're standing their ground, right? They are full of conviction in their reasoning behind their obstinance. So these traits though, make an effective leader. So take your time to ask if you value what bothers you more than what the lesson is maybe that your child is learning and is it really worth physically, mentally, and emotionally exhausting you? Oftentimes it's not. Oftentimes it's our ego that wants to be right and wants our child to do what we think will make them into a responsible, resilient, respectful adult. 
But I think many of us remember when we were teens and we were also oppositional and we were also thinking that we knew it all. But, you know, we learned how real life experience. So you ready for the self-esteem exercises? These can be done with a five-year-old and can be done with an 18-year-old. And we can do it too. You know, people discount the um, importance of just being grateful. You've always, you know, like a lot of us here, we should be grateful. But when we write it down, especially when we have a really crappy day, and it could be just such simple, simple blessings. I'm grateful for the two dogs that we have. I'm grateful for the health of my daughters. I'm grateful for, um, you know, having the courage that I've shown up recording these parenting tips despite the incredible fear that I have. Um, sometimes I wonder if I should do it, but I face up and I'm grateful for that. So even a five-year-old, they can be grateful for the sun coming out. They can be grateful that they were able to jump outside and play in the rain or color in their favorite coloring book or watch their favorite um, Dora the Explorer or whatever cartoon, TV show, you guys watched a family movie, or they ate their favorite snack. I mean, when you start thinking about what's going right in your life, your mood will automatically lift, right? You can go from being super, super, super upset, and if someone were to offer you your favorite treat in the world, well, your um, you know temper would probably be reversed, and you'll feel okay, right? If someone gave you a glass of your favorite, favorite wine when you were super, super pissed off, you might like not be pissed off anymore, right? You might want like two or three glasses of your favorite wine. But the main thing is practice daily gratitude. I always used to say, what are the three most favorite things that happened to you today? And that's what we do today. In fact, um, the other day, we kind of forgot to do it, didn't make time to do it. And Chelsea, after a long day of working as a cashier at a supermarket said, mom, can we um, get back to doing the favorite part of the day? And it just could be the one thing that really brightened your day. And it could be where um, she, you know, my daughter says something that made me laugh, or we watched a commercial and laughed like crazy, or Recently, you know, when we make a silly TikTok video and we have to do it seven times before we both think that it's okay enough to post. But, you know, the gratitude thing will make a difference. Second thing is ask your child what they value in themselves. This is a question that very rarely are we asked. What is a trait that they really feel is a gift? It could be drawing. It could be the ability to make friends easy. It could be um, a physical trait like their smile. It could be um, how they can make the best peanut butter jelly sandwich. They give the greatest hugs. They have the ability to make their grandma or their dad laugh. And when you focus on what's going right in your life, your self-esteem will automatically be lifted and you'll feel like smiling more rather than crying or feeling frustrated and just feel like, you know what, I just give up. So I invite you to practice building your child's self-esteem and at the same time, build a family self-esteem. Make it a family activity during this distance learning um, phase, but also continue it after. My girls are 18 and 24, and they recently brought back the what's your favorite part of the day thing. And I realized that, you know, when things are kind of crummy, we sometimes forget to just share the most simple gratitudes in our life. If you don't feel like sharing it, write it down. Have them write it down. It could be that a boy flirted with them or someone said something really sweet to them. And if you have an emotional teenager who's not comfortable sharing, they can at least write it down in their secret journal that you swear that no one will, you know, look at it. They can even have a lock for it. Remember those diaries that had locks? And just practice. Self-esteem building exercises will really make a difference in your child's um, self-worth. And I hope that was a worthy tip 
for the day and stay tuned for tomorrow's tip. Bye.